we're going to get involved very soon on a federal basis if they don't clean up their act. One of the things we're very uh, upset about and angry about is we're paying a lot of money to Los Angeles to build the subway system, billions and billions of dollars, and yet you have tents all over the place, and you have — you really have a sanitary condition because this water is rushing into the ocean. Many local leaders and advocates for the homeless are firing back, saying federal housing cuts and other administration stances have fueled the crisis. Yesterday, Mayor Eric Garcetti sent a letter to the president calling for the government to take action, including building housing for the homeless and funding grants for homeless assistance. Two former U.S. officials tell The Washington Post that it involves a promise that the president made to a foreign leader that was thought to be so troubling it prompted a U.S. intelligence official to file a formal whistleblower complaint with the intel community's inspector general. The Post says it is unclear which foreign leader the president was speaking with or what he promised. But NBC News has since learned from a former U.S. intelligence official that it involves a phone conversation. House Intelligence Committee Chairman Adam Schiff has issued a subpoena to obtain the whistleblower's complaint, but the acting director of national intelligence, Joseph McGuire, is refusing to hand over that report for now. McGuire says he determined the allegations did not merit urgent concern, and since they relate to a person outside of the intel community, he does not need to pass them along to Capitol Hill. Even if you could make a colorable claim of privilege over the subject matter of the complaint, given that it involves something that the IG has already found to be serious and credible uh, and evidence of wrongdoing of one kind or another, there is no privilege that covers that. There is no privilege to conceal that. There is no privilege to be corrupt. We can't get an answer because the Department of Justice and the Director of National Intelligence will not authorize the IG to tell us. Um, and the Inspector General is doing his very best to be very careful that he follow the law. And in some respects, the Inspector General is in the same position of the whistleblower, which is if the inspector general steps one foot outside of what he's authorized to do, then he is not protected. And so uh, this shows how someone is trying to manipulate the system to keep information about an urgent matter from the Congress. And here we go again. I'm Barry Gordon. And I'm James Farr. This is News Wrap, live at 5. Well, hello. Um, I was missing uh, last week. I think we were all missing last week, as a matter of fact. And now uh, Dre is missing. But we have a wonderful person to fill his seat. Uh, we're very, very pleased to have the host and star of Conversation Live right here on the Arroyo channel, Mr. James Farr. James, welcome to News Wrap, man. Very, man. Thanks for having me. I'm happy to fill in for, for Andre, and, and, and I'm a big fan of you guys. Oh, well, I, I thank watch, you. I watch every week. Thank you. I appreciate that. Well, uh, wow. Um, I don't, you know, it, every time we come on, something happens and we say, okay, maybe this is it. Maybe this is the straw that breaks the camel's back. Maybe this is the thing that America is going to look at and say, oh my God, what did we do? in 2016 why did we put that man in office and rise up and get congress to kick him the hell out well we and it doesn't put, happen we didn't put him in office no i'm, I'm not i'm not going to be a part of that no <laughs> and i didn't either okay all right um, no neither of us did and uh -huh. i don't think the state of california did certainly exactly um actually it was a handful of people in what three or four states that put him in office but goodness the fact that he even got close is shocking. And so I, I mean, now, I mean, this thing is crazy. It's almost like he keeps churning out controversy, right? And, yeah. and lie after lie. So just as we've di or somewhat digested some of the bull, 
right. here comes another serving. So it's almost, he, he's almost like a, uh, a chef at a buffet mm -hmm. where there's just endless amount of garbage food. Yeah, right. That's what he's serving us. Well, I could use another word for what he's serving up. And uh, yeah, and he, but he serves it up constantly. And I think he's figured out that the more he serves up, the less we'll care. I mean, I think that that that's sort of what he counts on. I don't give him. I don't give him so that much credit. Garbage. No, that's true. I don't give him that much credit. I mean, he doesn't credit really know what. That I, 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 no. I, I think he's so used to just moving the way that he moves. Yeah. And completely in a bubble, and now he's in a whole nother type of bubble. Yeah. One that has transparency. Mm -hmm. One that he's a public figure, and, right. and the people he works for the people now. But he doesn't realize that. No, nah, no, no, no. Well, well most seventy-something-year-old man people Watch don't it. change. <laughs> don't change. Watch it. <laughs> I crossed the big seven, so yeah. Uh, congrats, congratulations, and I'm gonna try to catch you. <laughs> but that's not gonna change the fact that most at that age just don't change. You are who you are, and yeah. he's been so used to moving the way that he's moved throughout his private sector career that he doesn't quite understand that you can't lie like this. Right. I, I, that's right. You people lie in business all the all time, the time, don't they? Yeah. And there aren't really great consequences for doing that. You know, as you, you walk into a car dealer, you don't expect to get the truth, you know, when you talk to a car dealer, but you expect to get the truth when you talk to a president. Right. And, and you're talking about fraud mm -hmm. versus <laughs> misrepresentation of the truth, right? And maybe treason is going on here, mm -hmm. too. I mean, you, you know, know the, this whole thing with the uh, whistleblower. Yeah. You know, that that's... That's interesting, you know, what is Trump says, uh, you know, who, th who thinks that he's so stupid, so to speak, that he would be saying something inappropriate on a potentially... I, I do. You, you, you do? <laughs> a I think he's absolutely that stupid. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, yeah. I, that, that's what kills me. I guess if he was a smart liar, I would be less upset. <laughs> but he's such an idiot, and so the, the problem is that we're not only stuck with someone who lies and manipulates, but we're stuck with some, well, I guess we had someone who was smart and lied and manipulated, and his name was Richard Nixon. But, you know, we were able to get rid of Richard <laughs> Nixon. Uh, and he and left. He left because someone made the point, I think it was today, on television, they, on cable news, they were saying, yeah, but even Richard Nixon had some sense of conscience, some, some sense that when they came to him and said, you know, you're going to lose, he said, oh, well, okay, I guess I stepped too far, and I'm going to go. Mm -hmm. I, everyone's saying, you know, will Trump even go if he's not elected in next year? <laughs> you said I mean, he's not going to have to drag him out. Drag him out the White House? Yeah. Uh, well, well, I mean, I, it, it, he is, he's so not what we, he's so beyond our understanding. Mm -hmm. You know, I think, I think there are third world countries that can understand him. Uh, uh, Trevor Noah talks all the time about saying it's not so unusual to him because mm -hmm. there are a whole bunch of African countries that have dealt with people like this. Yeah, but I mean, and, but those people were acculturated in the spaces yeah. that, that they've been. Most of them learned that behavior from yeah. from uh, um, uh, colonizers who actually settled those countries. Right. And so it's 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 a learned behavior and, and dictatorship that came. And I forget the president of Zimbabwe, the former president of Zimbabwe, who just passed. And sure. stuff. So you, this is a whole different kind of animal. This is a it president is. of the United States who is completely unfit to hold the office right. just by his own conduct. And, and so is this it? Is this now, I mean, we, we kind of have a smoking gun. It, no one's denying it. I mean, even Rudy Giuliani didn't deny it yesterday. He talked to the, the president of Ukraine and basically said, get me the goods on Joe Biden. Mm -hmm. Is his that son, it? His son, Joe Biden's son. Joe, and Joe Biden, yeah. both of them. So is this it? Is, is this the moment when America says... That's okay, enough. that's enough. 
You know what? We're done. I, I, I don't think so, Barry. And, and the reason why I don't think so is because regardless of how we feel about the election, right, Trump got a lot of votes. I mean, it wasn't yeah. like Hillary got 70, I mean, I'm just throwing numbers out there, 70 million votes and he got 20 million. No, there was he, a difference she got 3 a, million more, more votes. More than him. That's not a ton of more votes. That's, that's not, not a, a lot. ton more votes. So yeah. there are a lot of people, yeah. and, and the more that he continues to patronize to his base, the more he continues to inflame with the, some of the comments and remarks that he made, these people, and I've spent some time in, in, in those spaces as a journalist just observing. Sure. And and the reverence that they have for him yeah. is is it's it's just undeniable that there is absolutely nothing he can do wrong. And I'll go even a step further. Here, right here in Pasadena, here right here in California, because it may not be popular to be a Trump supporter, mm -hmm. but there are a lot of people. I was at an event a few weeks ago, and uh, there were no MAGA hats, but there were some support Trump hats, you know? And it was almost like people were looking across the room like, yeah, you know, like, finally, we're in a safe place where we can be, you know, Trumpers. And racists. And, well, there were a little bit of everybody there, but perhaps. Yeah. But I, I hate to tell you this, Barry. We only got five more years to deal with it. <laughs> no, don't say that. You really think he's going to get reelected? Yes. Really? Yes, and I've never said that publicly, um, but yes, I, I, I really do. Based on what I'm seeing and how people feel that support him, mm -hmm. we have the luxury here in California to always go blue. And so, you know, right. when you look at people got on Kaepernick for saying he didn't vote that time in right. that last cycle, you know, in California, we have the luxury of voting or not voting because I know you're going to go vote blue, right? Right. And so that's kind of how it typically rolls. So right. in the last election cycle, I wasn't a fan of Hillary's, mm -hmm. nor was I a fan of his. But uh, Jill Stein gave an alternative option as I walked into the ballot there booth you go. with my daughter. So I was able to check a box. OK, we're supporting the empowerment of women. I'm yeah. teaching my little girl the right. possibilities, but I couldn't vote for one or the other. It's other places that we got to be worried about. But that's why I think he's going to lose. Exactly what you said is the reason I think he's going to lose, because I don't think that we're going to fall for a Jill Stein this time. I don't think we will. And I totally agree with you. I had to totally, I did not like Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. I didn't like him before, like her before she ran, and I didn't like her when she ran, and I didn't like the way she ran against Obama, and I and I didn't like Bill at that point. And Bill has done some things that I have not thought were were terribly wonderful as president, um, let alone his own morality and you know his own moral center. But that's. Putting that aside, I mean, the, the crime bill and some of the other things, welfare reform, which I put in quotes mm -hmm. because it really wasn't reform, um, you know, this whole triangulation thing. I mean, he held back the progressive movement for years and gave us George W. Bush. So I really think that um, this time we know what we got. And I think that what is going to happen is there's going to be a massive uh, Democratic Party turnout. It is not going to split to a third party. Mm -hmm. And um, even if it's Biden or Sanders doddering around or whatever, you know, although Sanders really isn't doddering, he's just yelling a lot, but he's not doddering. But do Biden is doddering a mm -hmm. little bit. And that record player thing, I don't know what that was about. He that, looks a little dazed. So, <laughs> whoa. But... Um, but I honestly think that's not going to happen, and so I think those people are going to come back. And based on 2018, I think that suburban white women are coming to the Democratic Party in droves, and I think that's going to make the difference. So I'm going to hold my optimism. Perhaps. I knew in the last cycle, and I remember having conversation over coffee with people about this, when I sat there and said with a straight face, Hillary Clinton will not win the election. Oh, I said that too. And then yeah. we're like, what do you mean? Yeah, you know, I know. What, 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 how, I know. You know. I said was, that too. I said, America, and when you look at the patriarch system, right, that has been in place since the founding of this country, mm -hmm. our, our, our patriarchs, white men told us, told America, if there is this proverbial they who control right. stuff, right? right? They told us then they would rather have an African American 
that they think they can control than to elevate their woman into the highest office of the land. And then coming off of eight years of the Obama administration, yeah. there was an intention to, to, to correct Maybe. what possibly, you know, what had happened in the previous I eight think years. there were other things going on. There was certainly identity going on. There's, there's no question. Absolutely, there was identity. But I want, I want to yeah, touch we gotta, on that. Before we do, we got to go to the local brief. Okay. And we'll maybe come back to that in Facebook. Yeah, because yeah, I definitely want to talk about this whistleblower thing and snitching and everything. Yeah, right. There. Okay, yeah. cool. This is your local news brief for Friday, September 20th, 2019. Pasadena's Historic Preservation Commission will meet on Tuesday to consider landmark status for the Avon Building on East Foothill Boulevard. City Council will have to approve anything the Historic Preservation Commission presents. Approval of the landmark status would require Home Depot to apply for a certificate of appropriateness in order to alter the building's exterior, any additions, new construction, or any demolition. Home Depot's corporate office has responded with a no comment on the situation. The building has been occupied by the home improvement chain since 2016 and is planned to become a large commercial and retail configuration. Plans for a 710 freeway extension are politically dead after decades of opposition halted various proposals for Caltrans to connect the freeway to the 210. Caltrans had acquired more than 460 properties in the transit zone with intent for development, but twin California state bills will halt plans for freeway development. SB7 enacts rent control and measures that deal with the management of properties owned by Caltrans and includes language that prohibits further funding of 710 development. AB29 states this bill would, on January January 1st, 2024, remove from the California Freeway and Expressway system the portion of Route 710 between Alhambra Avenue in the city of Los Angeles and California Boulevard in the city of Pasadena. Once either is signed into law by Governor Newsom, Caltrans can choose to sell the land. Several city managers have sent a letter to the Pasadena Humane Society, PHS, with concerns of drastic price increases. Some cities within the West San Gabriel Valley are facing up to a 500% increase in their contracts with PHS. Through a cost analysis with an outside accounting firm, PHS determined that their fee structure was out of alignment with the cost of services delivered. Dia Duvernet, the society's new president and CEO, defends the price increase, saying, We spend almost all of our $13 million budget providing services to the cities we are contracted to serve. However, under the current contracts, the fees cover less than 25% of our budget. Pasadena's new bill is expected to rise, but the exact number is unknown. PHS is contracted for stray patrol and pickup, bite investigations, low-cost spay and neuter clinics, and animal cruelty investigations, among other tasks. Duvernet is quoted in a Pasadena Now article as saying, PHS absolutely wants to continue providing high-quality animal control and care to our contract localities. Compassion and care have been at the heart of our mission since 1903. Uh, we should, can we just keep showing the animal pictures? I don't know. It's making me feel better. You know, I can forget about Trump and everything and just watch animal pictures for the next 10 minutes. Well, you know, it, it just <laughs> amazes me, and, and, and I'm going to get in trouble with, with animal lovers. Okay. But the amount of attention... Oh. that we give to our canine companions when, you know, in our first sec segment in the National, we're, we're looking at a, a, a crisis in homelessness and, mm -hmm. and just a, in and around the city. There, there are encampments that are popping up here in the city. We don't have to look to downtown L.A. They're right here in our own backyard. Oh, yeah, but we can go even further than that because so many of the people that are on the streets have their pets and mm -hmm. are loving their pets. You see so many, of course, I think some of that might be a little, you know, I can get more money mm -hmm. if, I, if I put my pet out there and, you know, and say, oh, come on, you know, you gotta give me, you know, some, put some money in the jar, you mm -hmm. know. But, um, but I've seen some of the interactions and they, they really are, are wonderful to their pets. And I've actually seen people get, you know, food and give it to their pets first, mm -hmm. and then eat. You know. Yeah, I don't know nothing about that. Just, kind of, <laughs> just kind of, You don't have a pet? No. I, I got kids. Oh, okay. Yeah, and that's the and that okay. son of mine. Is and they don't puppy. want a pet? Uh, uh, they don't. Have, well, no. Yeah, they do, but no. Because <laughs> I mean, then you got to house them when you go out of town. Yeah, right. You got to feed them. Right. Like y your life revolves around them, and so they kind of again these city managers from these local partner municipalities that are, um, you know, and I haven't dug all into did a deep dive into what the issues are, but. Uh, you know, 
the Humane Society is performing a service. Of course. A contracted service that apparently is being under sir, under billed for the service. Now, when they say that they're raising their prices in some places, what, 500 percent or mm -hmm. something, mm -hmm. but they're talking about their prices to the city, right? Correct. They're not raising their prices to the people. No. Okay. No. So they're talking about the like, contract that they have. It's not like you're going to be paying, you know, four hundred dollars to get your dog spayed or, you know, or new. No, it, no, no, no. Okay. It, it's similar to L.A. County sheriffs okay. being contracted to patrol right. a, 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 a municipality because they don't have their own okay. hire their own police. Okay. Uh, police so department. our city's cheap. That's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> or, or they got to come up with the box to help those animals. Come on. Or easy, and then you know this home. Deep uh, or we got to get Sarah McLaughlin, you know, and she's going to have to sing and a few more songs and show weepy dogs and, you know, <laughs> and that might work. I don't know. Maybe maybe the council will get convinced by that, you know, yeah. bring, bring Sarah in, and have her sing. And if you know what I'm talking about, right, those late night things those late night you know we're, sh we're showing all those oh my gosh it's awful those abused dogs but let's go back to the homeless yes because you know trump has a solution he does. Which is basically wipe them out. <laughs> basically, <laughs> it's the same solution as with immigration. Uh, <laughs> it's basically, I don't want to see them. Mm -hmm. That's really what his, that's what his policy is. Mm -hmm. It's the I don't want to see them policy. I don't want to see immigrants, and I don't want to see homeless. And so they came up with this whole plan from the Council of Economic Advisors, and basically the theory is... Get rid of all the regulations, all the restrictive zoning, and somehow everyone's going to start building affordable housing for people that can't even afford any housing. We're in the Do desert. You see that working? I, is that in the desert? Somewhere? No, in L.A. Oh. in San Francisco. Okay. Do you see that working? No, because first of all, there's no available land. <laughs> right. You know, and, right. And and if I have never agreed with Mayor Terry Tornick, I have to agree with him on this point, which is in order to build something, you got to tear something down. Like in here in the city of Pasadena, yeah. There's no room. Where do you build it? I mean, yeah. the the and again, keeping localizing it. We had an initiative uh, in the city to convert motels along the Col East Colorado Corridor, mm -hmm. which NIMBYism kicked in at its highest degree. Nobody wanted it. Right. In, not in my neighborhood. Right. But then you also don't want the homeless person defecating in front of your house. Right. In your neighborhood. That's right. So, you know, I heard somewhere someone said, you know, the, the best solution to homelessness is, I'm going to tell you a secret. Okay. Have them live with you. <laughs> <laughs> Problem solved, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> if if each of us, if each yeah. one of you takes somebody in that's homeless, it's problem solved. Yeah, but a lot of the homeless, and certainly not as many as Trump thinks, but I mean, there is a mental health issue. Here. Sure. And how are we going to deal with that? And this goes back to the 80s. I'm old enough to remember. You're not, but. It goes back to the 1980s when, when Reagan was, uh, actually the 70s, when Reagan was governor and basically kicked all of these people out of, you know, mental institutions. Now, I don't want to put them back in mental institutions the way they were, because mental institutions were pretty horrible back then, so I, I get that. But... Some, I mean, if you talk to them, they don't want to live indoors. No. They, they want to live on the street. No. They want to live in a tent or they, you know, and and how do you deal with that? That, that becomes a, a tough problem. And then, you know, the other side of it is, is it, is it a police thing? I mean, is it just we've got to, you know, send the police out? That's what Trump thinks. Send the police out and wipe them, wipe those tent cities away. But I mean, then what do you do with the people? So now he's blaming homeless shelters. That's the one I love. He's saying that homeless shelters, that's what the article says, the report. Homeless shelters create homeless. 
because of their restriction. <laughs> <laughs> no, because because you're giving them an incentive to, to be, be homeless. homeless. Yeah. Right. I mean, the wonderful conservative theory, which is that. I mean, I guess to him that makes sense, right? I mean, yeah. like, to your point, there are variances. In, well, to in, him, Kofefi makes in, sense. In, so, in, you know, in, who knows? In homeless people. Like yeah. you said, some don't want to be housed. They yeah. choose to live free and outdoors, and, and that's that's prerog- their prerogative. Um, like I said, you know, everybody takes somebody in, problem solved. You know, but he, he instead wants to blame and, and finger point. Sure. And so I think... And you brought you brought up the great Ronnie Reagan. Um, I'm I'm not old enough, but I am old enough to remember just a little bit. Mm-hmm. And I think that Trump is actually fulfilling a prophecy of making America great again. Like he's making it happen for old Ronnie. I'm sure Ronnie and Nancy are high fiving up. Oh yeah. With God, right? Yeah. Oh, I thought when you said he's fulfilling a prophecy that you were saying he actually is the Antichrist, which is actually one of my <laughs> one of my theories. Uh, you got even you, though I'm Jewish, you but, give him you too know. much credit. You, <laughs> you know, well, you give him too much credit. Oh. I think you give him too much intelligence. Well, he said he was, you know, basically the second coming. He, I mean, he basically said that. And did, isn't it true that in in Revelations they say that the Antichrist will say? I am the Messiah, and he basically said, "I am the Messiah." So I don't even think he knows what a Messiah is. Well, oh, yeah, well that's true too. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you keep giving him credit <laughs> for for any level of brains. Yeah, I do. I guess I do. You know, it's di- you know you got people catering <laughs> to you. You grow up in a very privileged. I mean, people keep. Yeah. Saying he's this smart man, and I'm like, where? I know, I know. We're gonna keep this going on uh, Facebook for a few minutes anyway. We haven't gotten any comments. That's because they're mesmerized by listening to you, James. You think so? I think so. Okay. I think they're listening uh, with rapt attention. I, I think I've scared so. the audience off. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to keep this going. Uh, let's uh, head over to, as Dre says, Studio B. Maybe we'll talk about the election a little bit. Sure. All right. I'm Barry Gordon. I'm James Farr, not Andre Coleman. <laughs> and this is News Wrap. Live at five. See you in a few seconds.